When I'm making films in Unreal Engine, I always run into this same problem, and that's having the talent casting shadows on the environment around them. I'm currently making a zombie film in Unreal, and I want to show you how I'm going to solve this problem. So here we are in the scene right now. That is me, and I'm going to shoot a zombie in the head right here. Bang. As you can see in here, there's a big problem if you look under my feet no shadow. I'm just not grounded in the environment and it's painfully obvious. One of the most amazing things about shadows is that they are a subtle and b they make a huge difference for making the whole scene feel much more realistic. One of the normal ways that I would do this would be casting shadows from a plane in Unreal. So let me show you why that's not going to work in this case either. So you can see my footage is on a plane right here. I can obviously see my footage being played back but translucent planes don't cast shadows into your scene. You need to change the blend mode to something else like masked. So here's my material right here. All we need to do over here in blend mode is change this to masked. Let's apply that change and now you can see we have a masked cutout. This will cast shadows onto any normal 3D environment but we don't have a normal 3D environment because the background is a Gaussian splat which brings me to the method I'm actually going to try. So let's go to the add menu up the top here and add a plane. I'm going to drag it into the scene. And you can see as I drag that in, being that this is a normal 3D object, you can start to see the shadow being cast onto it. Let's scale this plane up. I just want it to be large enough to include my shadow, but it's also going to need to be animated so that as I move through the scene, the shadow always appears to be coming from my feet, because as I scrub through the footage, my character moves and they start to sink into the plane. So let's animate this white plane using sequencer and keyframes. So let's grab the plane. I'm going to actually rename it shadow plane. Let's drag that into my sequencer and let's go and find a good keyframe to start with. So the shadow looks good on this frame. So let's keyframe the transform in sequencer by just clicking on the diamond right here and that sets a keyframe. And we're going to just scrub through this and adjust the height of this plane so that it always appears to be casting the shadow correctly. Now you can see when I try and position the plane down here, it doesn't quite look correct by targeting the foot closest to the camera because this clearly doesn't line up with my feet. So I'm actually going to align this up to the foot behind. By targeting at least one foot that looks correct, I think we'll get a decent result. So I've done that keyframing now and as I scrub through my footage, you can see the shadow appears to stay pretty much where my feet are. We have a masked material here, but that's not what I want to ultimately render with because what masked materials do is they chew up your edge. They make it very binary and it kills any semi-transparency like in places like hair. So let's take this material of me. We're going to duplicate this. So let's first of all duplicate the plane. We'll call this shot two shadow. Shot two shadow is going to have our masked material on it and shot to plane is going to have same media and everything. It's just going to have the blend mode as translucent. So I'm going to navigate to where my material is. I can right click on that and duplicate it. Let's open this PBR material two and let's switch that over to translucent. And now we can add this PBR material over to our shot to plane. A quick thing to mention here, and some of you might be thinking there is actually a checkbox in materials that allows you to cast a shadow as a masked material, even when you're in a translucent blend mode. And you would be right to say that. I tested this. It doesn't work. If it works for you, that's great. This would be a nice little workaround. For some reason, for me, currently in the engine, that doesn't work. But I will say there's also an advantage to doing this the way I'm doing it right now. So if we want to adjust the position or angle of the shadow, we can actually just rotate it in here. You see, by rotating it, you can maybe get some more accurate results this way. This is the big advantage to using this method, overcasting the shadow as masked from one material. We have shot two plane. This is the one we want to be rendered as final pixel, but we don't also want that to be visible when we're doing this shadow plane rendering. So let's hide this and make it hidden in game. And now we should just see shot two shadow which again, we don't want to see. We just want it to cast a shadow. So let's hide that as well. And the shadow disappears. So let's go and check hidden shadow. So now we've got our shadow right here and I can scrub through and we will only see the shadow. So to render this sequence, hit the clapperboard down here, double check my presets. So I'm doing an EXR sequence in 16 bits, deferred rendering. So it's lumen color output. I'm disabling the tone curve. So I'm going to get sRGB linear color space over to DaVinci game overrides to force cinematic settings and output. I'm going to set my output directory. That seems perfectly good to me. Let's hit render. Shadow capture has rendered and now we need to turn on our footage, our translucent plane. Let's make sure that that is visible. 
So our translucent material is visible and now we just need to hide our shadow catching plane right here. So let's make sure that that's hidden in game and that means it won't be visible during render time. And now we just need to render this shot as it was without shadows and bring the two together in DaVinci. So once again, click the clapperboard, check my settings. Everything's pretty much exactly the same as before except my output directory and render local. So that's rendered now. I'm going to go over to DaVinci and bring these two together. So I'm in DaVinci right now. Let's import that footage. So I'm in my media pool right now. I'm just going to locate where I've put it. So there's our captured shadow. Drag that in here. So let's go to shot two and there's me shooting a zombie. Bang. Lovely. <laughs> In the timeline, I'm going to drop in my main footage right here. Let's drag that right in here. And we're going to do this in Fusion Compositing. I'm in Fusion and the first thing you'll notice is the footage is very dark. I'm going to click on Media In, Shift Space, and then type in Color. There we go. Color Corrector. Let's add that to the chain. I'm just going to bring the gain up a bit so that I can actually see what's going on. Okay, so there's our footage. You can scrub through. It's just as it was before, no shadows under the feet. We're going to now bring in the shadow footage. Drag that in here and we need to merge these two together. So I'm going to take this media in two. We can view that by just clicking on the right hand viewer right here, the right hand dot. And that's going to show us our footage. So you can see it's exactly the same footage, exactly the same time scale. One of them is just the shadow. So I'm going to shift and space Luma and then use the Luma key. Now what it seems to be doing here is actually removing the shadow and keeping the lighter area. The first thing I'll do is invert this luma here and now it should keep the shadow and remove anything really bright and we can mess with our luminance value to change that. I don't need this to be pixel perfect right now. I seem to have isolated the shadow. It's still there and gotten rid of most of the white plane but we obviously have the rest of the scene here as well so we need to mask that out and I'm going to use a polygon tool for that. So here's our polygon tool. Let's click and drag that in. And I'm going to pipe that into the garbage, my input of the Lumic here. And now in the viewer, I can just click and drag and draw a sort of mask around this plane. And I'm going to invert this polygon as well, because basically it's keeping everything outside of it. I need to keep everything inside of it. There we go. That is our shadow. So now we just need to merge this with our footage. Let's take the output of the Lumic here and hover that over the end of this color corrector. And it's going to create that merge for us. Let's view that. Now we can see our shadow is over the top. The reason the shadow isn't the right color is because we were casting onto a white plane. Let's get another color corrector node and place it after the Luma here. So shift space, color corrector. And that looks pretty good, actually. I think the only other thing that I would do here is blur the shadow out a little bit because it's a bit hard and that's because of the Luma here constricting the edges a bit. So I want to feather it back out the way it was before. So let's click on the color corrector, shift space, blur. We want a Gaussian blur. There we go. Cool. Let's take a look at the result. So this is the method I'm going to go with for this film. I think it's a lot quicker, a lot more scalable than using a motion capture approach. And it actually works really well. Maybe not for every instance, but I do think it's working really nicely here. I've got some more videos coming up about this film that we're making. I'm really excited about those. So stay tuned and I'll see you on the next one.